A very good morning. I'm Dr. G. Prasad Rao, a senior psychiatrist from Masha Hospital, Hyderabad. It's a pleasure to meet you through this media and my YouTube channel, Manasarovar, to share with you what I understand about the child psychology. Today, one of the most common symptoms which some of you would have seen is a child who does not want to go to school. Previously, we used to just label them, if especially if a child stops going to school for more than four weeks or child initially starts becoming irregular and then over a period of two to three months, every day in the morning, child wakes up with a moody symptoms, says today I don't want to go to school, would give some lame excuses and then escape that morning first two hours and after that first two hours where the child through the strong protest can stay back at home but at the same time after that the parents might not find lot of changes. Child might go into a play at home, child can today's world for example might spend lot of time on the tablet watching lot of YouTube, internet uh, related programs child might get into the games of let's say computer games or internet games or downloading plays and lot of things so they but the crucial thing is that the child stops going to the school now this can occur from any age between fifth year till 14th year so typically this is called school phobia previously now we actually call it a kind of because phobia probably connotes a totally a negative attitude to others we say school refusal is a word here the child has a set of psychological issues at that point of time and because of that does not want to go to school now when to label this as a problem especially if it is crossing more than two months and the child stays at home and otherwise most of the parents tell us that at, at home he is alright but every day in the morning he creates a lot of pandemic, he creates problems, he shouts, he throws things, he doesn't get up from the bed, he weeps or he throws things, he shows temper tantrums. These are the typical symptoms in the morning or sometimes some children are more subtle. Mommy, if I go, something will happen to you. So I, don't, I want to be with you all the time. So that is openly expressed that they have a fear that mother might have some problems if the, while the child is in the school. So that is a very important connotation because the child is now not only worried about probably himself in the school, but also it can be because the child at that point of time as a fear that something might happen to the mother as well. So that is one thing. There is another thing which happens. Usually it would start with a small trigger. It can be a trigger like a fever which lasted for more than a week or two during that time and post viral depressions in children are known. That is because virus affects the brain and brain causes fatigue and that fatigue leads to depression symptoms. So, that's also called post viral depression. But more important, here a significant event might happen at school as well, like a particular teacher might have scolded. For a sensitive child, a severe scolding by a teacher in the public, in this classroom, for example, in the public means in the classroom, might hurt the child so much that the child refused to go. Or a bad peer interaction some kind of an abuse in the school, some kind of a childhood abuse also can, sexual abuse can also might be a trigger. We really don't know unless we probe it. Each child is unique for me. Each child has his or her own set of problems. In fact, this is equally common in boys and girls. It's more common between fifth year to 14th year, more common at an anger age group, 
and what is typically we you see some in some cases is every summer after summer holidays starting the school for the first two months this child has a problem so here we are actually identifying a pattern in a child every year for the first two three months the parents have quite a lot of problem in the first few years this actually is a significant problem because here we do identify a mood and a temperament which is different in this child and this child definitely needs a lot bit of psychological help counseling and making them into a proper pattern the other things we normally do and i think see very commonly is if a significant relative for example the child is attached to the grandfather and the grandfather is sick it usually starts that the child wants to be with the grandfather for the fear that something might happen to grandfather in his absence remember what the child is fearing here is not only for himself going to the school not for that but he is fearing that something might happen to that grandfather so he has to be there to probably see watch take care and all those affections apart from that fear and anxiety that something will happen in his absence so he might frequently tell the parents or family members look something might happen so i want to be in the school so this is another symptom which is very common but usually it can be a multiple emotional symptoms at coming at the same time these children do have sleep problems these children do have anxieties they are more irritable at that times and sometimes parents try lot of techniques like just changing a school changing a school doesn't help because the problem is not with the school even if there is a problem in a with a teacher i think the best way is that the psychologist goes to the school talks to the teacher tries to say that this all children are different this is a sensitive child and let us do this and through the intervention of a child psychologist at the school and at the clinic for the child and the parents we definitely need to manipulate the environment little bit but apart from that there are a few other things which is important we need to identify what are the main cause in each child who is refusing to school remember when a child doesn't go to school Uh, much beyond any for example a fever usually we expect two three days rest uh, much beyond if unless there is a serious illness like the child is not able to walk or something in general we expect the child to go back to school as soon as the recovery starts of course the child takes the first few days a little difficulty but if it child is staying at home for more than 3 weeks or 4 weeks first red flag red flag means we need to watch this child much more closer and probably i would suggest a very early intervention between 4 to 8 weeks if the child is not going that is within 2 months if you consult usually some of the children are temperamentally stubborn yes some of us are stubborn anyway so a stubborn child need to be counseled properly and usually they recover very well remember school refusal or the school phobia here i am using the words both equally that school refusal is the more accepted word today the e is a symptom of emotional distress in that child and sometimes we do find occurring for the first time during adolescence that is between 14 to 19 years age group even in this adolescence the symptoms are more or less same only thing is the symptoms would be different from the child here the adolescent is at home avoiding school and today's world we find lot of them spending lot of time on the whatsapp or instagram or internet addiction what we call the addictions the more modern addictions and but this is symptom of especially a previously well regularized well systematic child organized well and was doing well but nobody is not going to college or school there is some problem my only suggestion as a main message to you all is whenever you find any child or adolescent who is at least for few weeks not going properly suggest a proper psychological assessment and counseling or a psychiatric assessment 
it can be a symptom of depression it can be a symptom of a mood disorder remember almost all anxiety disorders and mood disorders occur for the first time between 12 to 18 years or 12 to 21 years a phase where the brain grows maximum and that is a time where emotional disorders occur ladies and gentlemen in today's modern behavior therapies or counseling or mindfulness behavior therapies or relaxation therapies should be done and practiced and pranayama practice would reduce the fears and phobia but in general if the symptom is started already and lasting for more than 8 weeks my suggestion is have a good psychological assessment and a psychiatric consultation so that we actually can cure the condition make the child again strong let us hope that all these children who are having these problems will be brought early and they are, cure, they are cured and they reach their goals in the life and be successful ever after thank you ladies and gentlemen i am going to see you in my next manasarovar youtube chat bye bye i am dr g prasad rao a senior psychiatrist from hyderabad